Hi, I'm Larry and welcome to my studio. A little bit about me before we get started. I've been a teacher with the City of Torrance's Cultural Arts Adult School Program and I've been teaching pastel, acrylic, and watercolor now for over 15 years. And in that time I've gotten a lot of students that continued to take my classes and when classes were canceled they didn't know what they were going to do. They, they liked the distraction of having a project or something to paint and now that's gone at least for the time being. Me on the other hand I had always wanted to try and do videos for my students to show them technique or something else and so I thought this was a good time to keep us all busy so that's where this video started. Today's project will be a pastel and I will break here so that I can show you my setup. Thank you for watching. Over here I have my pastel boxes. Also a little little box on top there for the pastels that I'm going to be using. I have paper towels. I have a support, my project. The support that my project is sitting on is just a 16 by 20 canvas that I've repurposed uh, with a couple of gator clips and a piece of, of molding for a block there. I've got my reference photo. I've got my a wet, pay, a wet towel there to kind of wash my fingers off every now and then. And I also have an ot light. Ot light is a full spectrum light, so it lets me see the actual color of my pastels. So let's get started. The project today is going to be a bird of paradise. I took this photograph up at the, the Wayfarer's Chapel a couple of weeks ago and I am always intrigued by the shape of these. They're rather exotic and very colorful. So this should be a fun, fun project. Now there are several ways of getting your design on your, your paper. And I will note that the paper I'm using is a commercial sanded paper and it's black. I don't know the grit. I, people give me things and I just use them. Um, but this I have mounted to a piece of, of foam core so that it, it's kind of on a solid surface and it makes it easier for me to work on and also helps when I come to framing it it's already mounted on a hard backing. So what I've done, and I, I totally encourage you all, while you have the time, to take up drawing. Drawing is important no matter what art you're planning on doing. Drawing is the essential for all painting, all art for that matter. And it helps you understand your subject better. I drew this freehand from my photograph. However, at times when I'm teaching my regular classes, I have just taken my, my photograph and just outlined and made, made this type of a drawing. But this one I've done freehand. Once I had it freehand, I took a photograph of it because it was too big to go in my scanner. But now I have it in my computer, so if I want to do it again, I can print it out. I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, um, I can do a lot of things with it with this design once I have it in my computer. But once you have the design, now you've got to get it on your, your pastel paper. So what I usually do is I take and I, I let me rip this off here. I will put chalk on the back where all the lines are going to be. And then I turn it over and I place it on my paper and tape it down. You see the tape right there. Tape it down and then go over it with a pencil or, or something hard enough that it will transfer the, the chalk onto the 
paper and then I have my outline. Uh, there are other types of transfer paper that you can use. I find that this is easy, it's simple. I can use whatever color I want. You know, if I'm working on white, I can use a, a light, a darker blue. This happened to be a kind of a, a blue green. This is not going to affect the outcome of my finished pastel painting. Also, because it takes a long time to find the right colors, I spent some time looking for at least the beginning colors that I'm going to want to start my my pastels with and I've put them in a separate box. It took me a long time to learn this but this really helps in the long run. So let me get set up here and we will get started on our painting. Now a couple other things that I use when I'm painting in pastel is that I have now let me take this off. I have this thing. It's called a color shaper. They are, they come in all different sizes and shapes and the tip is very flexible. Sometimes I buy things just because they look interesting and I don't know what I'm going to do with them. This is one of those things. And then I got into pastel and I needed smaller fingers than I have. I went, oh, I know what I can use. So these things make great little things to get in to get into small areas when you're when you're smudging out pastel. Also, the other thing that I, I have, and I'm since I do several different types of art, I've got brushes everywhere. Rather than using an eraser, which I could use, I can use a brush. This is just a soft almost like a, a mop brush or something. You can use, use that or you can use a stiffer brush. You know, this is another, another one of my watercolor brush. And just, just to get the excess off. This doesn't hurt anything. We're going to put down more more color so I'm not worried about it but I know a lot of people do like to keep their everything clean I'm not one of those now the first thing I usually do when I am starting a pastel is that I put down my colors I have my my reference photo right in front of me I've got a little nail that I've got this on and I will have it right there where I can look at it and see it and I will refer to it often. So it helps with pastel to work from the top down so that you're not dragging your arm through it. I'm going to start up in here with some of my lighter colors. So I'm, I'm looking and I see that there are several different colors in these in these petals up here. This is kind of like a light lemon yellow and I'm sorry I don't have exact names. Um, let's see if this one, this one says yellow green but I, it looks pretty yellow to me. Um, yellow there, there's a little bit of yellow here, tiny little bit there. You know it's not super important to just do it all at once. You can do it petal by petal, but this gets it out of the way. So a little bit over here. Then I look for the next color and that next color is sort of my my mid orange and this one I don't I don't have a name for. It's there's sort of a un, unwritten rule in pastel is you never have the color you need and that goes for this as well so I'm just I'm using colors when I'm when I was looking for colors I would take them up and I would kind of hold them up to my my drawing or my picture here and see how they looked against that and if it was close that's good enough 
So a little bit of this here. Each petal is going to be a little bit different in the way the color is distributed. So I'm just, like I said, my, my reference photo is right in front of me and I am referring to it often. That's not it. Next is more of a, a true orange. Now this is what I would call an underpainting. I'm just kind of basing in my colors and they can change if I don't like them. I can come in here and add to it. I can take and erase it out either with an eraser or a brush, just dust it off. This is just preliminary. I haven't blended anything. I'm just adding my colors right now. Not worried about shadow or form too much. I just want to get color down that will come later. Now there's some more of that that yellow right down in here. That's the first helicopter I've heard in days. Let's see where I can put this over here. I think you get the get the point. I don't want to take up all of our time with just me adding adding color when it's rather repetitive. So I think I'm going to break here and when we come back I'll show you how I blend this. Okay, I finished putting in my under colors for this and now I want to blend them. Now if you've got little fingers like me you can probably blend some of the, the wider areas with your finger. And this is just going to be a general blend right now. I'm going to avoid some of the lighter areas just for the time being. Now you don't have to blend. I just want to blend uh, for this one. Uh, some people like to have a bit more brush stroke or, or chalk stroke look, and that's fine. Uh, I have my paper, my wet towel over here so I can kind of wipe my fingers off. Uh, this is where I would use my, my little uh, color shaper. You can also use, this is called a, a paper stump. Uh, they're, they're just rolled up, tightly rolled up paper and if you need to clean them they usually come with a little piece of sandpaper or you can get some sandpaper out of the garage and you can clean them and sharpen them. I usually use the, the, the color shaper because it doesn't remove the chalk as much as the, the stump does. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to lightly blend. Lightly blend between the, the light air, lighter colors and the darker colors. There's a little bit of white in there at the base. And I'm just going to blend some of those colors down into the white. I also used a darker orange in places here. Now like I said, right now I'm not trying to do shadows or anything else. I'm just, this is just underpainting. This just gets it, my, my design established. It gets my colors established. 
I will come back later and put any detail in that I want. You know, sometimes I, I get to a point and I, I like it the way it is and I'll just leave it. I know this is a bit confusing, but I've got the picture right in front of me if I need to see what this is, where it's going. Your brain usually is not a real good rememberer. You know, it's always good to have your reference material where you can see it, not stuck in your bag or sitting home on the kitchen counter or wherever the last place was that you saw it. It needs to be in front of you so you can use it. I like to get all of my underpainting in first so that I can figure out if I want to put a background in and if so what kind of background. I'm just wiping off the tip of that brush on my wet towel. And it also helps by doing it and bringing things up at the same time. It helps your painting stay together. If you try to concentrate on one thing and finish it and then try to finish the other things, you can end up with areas that look way overworked and other areas that look like they really need some work. So this is just the, the start of this. Okay, now I'm going to do this, these little, I don't know what these are, the stamens or the anthers or something. I've forgotten all of my biology, but they're the little, little blue things. Now the end of them have this little cap. It's kind of this light tan color. It's almost a pinky tan. And if you don't have it, find something close. You know, like a light orange or a pink. You know, my, my students complain, well, I don't have the color. Well, sometimes you can blend colors together and make a color close to what you want. Or you can, you know, just use what you have. As long as you don't tell somebody else what color it's supposed to be, they will never know unless it's something way out of the ordinary. This is a dark blue for part of the stem. And I need this lighter blue that's along the back side of it. Okay, now I'm going to kind of blend these in together too. This is just kind of smooths it out, give it a little smoother look. Okay, I think I want to try to focus in, so take a little break here. <laughs>